Hello again. I have spoken before of the way in which what is sometimes called the green agenda is being used to push all sorts of unwelcome changes on our society, ranging from getting rid of gas cookers and petrol driven cars to giving up holidays abroad. In the same way, a movement is gathering pace which links man-made climate change to illegal immigration and suggests that one is caused by the other. The aim is to make people whose family origins lie in Europe and North America feel that they are to blame for global warming and consequently have an obligation to help those most affected by this supposed phenomenon by allowing them to come and live in our countries. Books are being written now which advance this hypothesis and set out the most horrifying solutions. The idea is that because Britain started the Industrial Revolution, which was followed by other European countries and then the United States, we must accept responsibility for the results of industrialization. All those factories, cars and aeroplanes pouring out their pollution into the atmosphere and heating up the planet. It was not the people of Africa or South America who created global warming. It was white people in the Northern Hemisphere and the effects are felt most powerfully in Africa and the rest of the Third World. Because our actions have trashed their countries and made farming harder and caused natural disasters like the recent floods in Pakistan, then we should let all the people from Pakistan and Africa come and live with us in Europe. This is essentially what is being claimed. A recently published book which argues this case very persuasively is called Nomad Century and written by a woman called Gaia Vince. I suppose that if you come from a family where your mother names you Gaia, you're bound to grow up thinking in global terms. In the book, to which I give a link in the description to this video, it is argued that migration has been a source of human success in the past and that it will benefit humanity this century, but only if we give up the idea of separate nationalities or ethnic ideas and adopt what she describes as a pan-species identity. She envisages a future where people become citizens of the United Nations and thinks that the UN should start seizing land in Canada, Scandinavia and Russia and then building new cities which will be occupied by Africans. Let me quote from the book. Migration is our way out of this crisis. Migration made us. This might be hard to see in the context of today's geopolitical identities and constraints where it can feel like an aberration, but viewed historically it is our national identities and borders that are the anomaly. So, the end of national borders and identities. Hmm, I wonder if everybody really wants that. For some of us, this book looks like the blueprint for totalitarianism with the United Nations assuming the most wide-ranging powers and forcing individual countries to do its bidding. What I do find a little alarming is the reviews of this book by newspapers like the Financial Times, which said that it is a hard-hitting must-read on how we will need to live in the coming decades to secure the long-term survival of humankind. In other words, Whoever reviewed this book for a respectable and influential newspaper agreed with the idea of the United Nations forcing Europe to accept unlimited immigration from Africa and for us all to adopt a pan-species identity. Nobody dismisses the book as lunacy because it is about climate change and this makes it invincible and any case set out unanswerable. I have an idea that linking immigration to climate change in this way is going to make it impossible to argue against immigration, even illegal immigration, because these people are going to be seen increasingly as climate refugees. If once you accept man-made climate change, then you will have to accept that 
people from Africa have a right to seek shelter in Europe because they are the victims of Europe. And since everybody does accept global warming as a consequence of the Industrial Revolution, then the natural corollary is that we must welcome with open arms the refugees whom we have created by our greedy and profligate ways.